Do you want a nicely decorated Christmas cottage that after Christmas you can take the decorations down and live in it anyway? I'm going to give you a world download and show you how to make it right now. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening and good night and welcome to another episode from me, Our Mance. And we are today going to build ourselves a little Christmas cottage. I'm going to do it in a slightly different way to the way I would do it normally. We're not going to sit there and do it block by block. I'm going to make this building in front of your very eyes using the replay mod and hopefully I can narrate it over the top and I don't fluff it and we'll see how it goes. But I'm in the middle of this beautiful snowy Tega village and as a result I think I'm going to make this in keeping with this village but also make sure that it remains along the theme of a Christmas cottage. It is after all as I record this and as you watch it Christmas. Do you know what I really like about it is the fact that when I jump you can see my shoes and when I land in the snow my shoes are under the snow but I don't leave any footprints. Does that mean I'm a ghost? So this is the kind of palette that we're going to start using. It's going to be very, very wood based. This one It's going to be very little stone in this. In fact, I may not even use the stone in anything other than the chimney, but lots of different woods. We've got our bushes and we've also got different colored walls because after all, it is Christmas. I will probably use other stuff as well. I just ain't got room in my inventory. Now, I didn't want this house to be too big, but neither did I want it to be too small because I want to get quite a lot of detail in this. So I've gone 15 wide with spacings at the front of eight, nine and eight. That gives me a central middle door, but also central windows at the two sides. I've lined it around the bottom with barrels because the barrels have a really nice effect around the bottom of the house. And I like the difference that's going to give. And then spruce columns up 10 high. I've then decided to go with some stripped oak because of the way that offsets against the, uh, the spruce columns. And as a result, I can get some nine high walls. I don't know what I'm gonna do with the top of this just yet. So I might add another little bit on. So I've come inside with some oak planks and I've lifted this up above the level of those barrels so as we've got an elevated front. So when I punch through on the door, I've got the ability to give it some steps and still come onto the flat floor. I then punch out two wide windows and think about what decoration it is I'm going to put around this. I want something quite dark so I went with some dark oak around these windows. Once the glass was in, I started to put the dark oak and I very quickly realised that I needed those windows to be one taller because the detail I had in my head just wasn't going to work. I then pulled some steps up to the front door. I'll probably make these slightly wider. I put a little bit of decoration around the door. I'm not entirely sure whether this is right yet. I might well change it. I then put another level of the stripped oak around because I've decided what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish this off with some upside down dark oak steps. So I thought I'd get the roof on just to give myself a bit of scale. So I put some upper legs on top of those spruce pillars and I put on a standard 12-12 gable. But it's not entirely standard because I'm poking out slightly. I want to have an overhang, but I don't want it to look stretched. So I've gone up four steps, overhang it once, come up three steps, and then I'm going to overhang it once more just to come up a single set of steps. It doesn't overdo it, but it does give that stretched feel without it being overbearing. I'm going to repeat that on the other side. now going to fill up the ends with stripped oak now normally I'd put windows in here I don't know if I will it's a big massive stripped oak there but what I thought I would do is some level of detail not entirely sure what did the same at the other end
and then right in the front I thought it lent itself to a bit of a dormer now I may have brought these posts up one too high um, but I think I can get away with it just about it's going to have a front facing window it's going to break up that roof it's going to be a massive area if I don't do it and I think I can put some really nice features across the front of the house as a result And then this back area so asks for a big chimney. It might be a little bit central, but again, I think we'll get away with it. The chimney comes inside the house and it's a really decent size so we can get some real smoke coming out the top of that by the end. I then finish it off by roughing up this roof with some blocks instead of some stairs randomly across. Makes it look just a little bit more rustic and also gives me somewhere to put some snow later on. I realised that that front face needed to have a continuation of that stripped oak so I popped that in there but I do need to break it up otherwise it's way too much of that cream colour. Put a large window in the front and then I thought why don't we window box that up, match up the window dressing itself and then put a window box underneath, literally with some dirt, that way I can put some flowers in there in a moment. But it didn't quite work out so I needed to take off the sides and put it on trapdoors, it looks much better that way. I then wanted to trim around to make sure that it looked like a nice circle, otherwise everything was going to be too square. I then expanded across the stairs, but it just didn't work. The door needed to have a similar frame, it looked a bit disjointed, so we added up a little bit more of that dark oak and then framed it up around with some nice diagonals, just to keep those diagonal lines from breaking up those straight lines. Doing the same in every single one of those frames where the windows are, again to keep continuity across the house. I then wanted to make a bit of a balcony on the side to break up that huge angle, that big di uh, triangle that we've got on the side there with the gable. Put some um, lanterns behind so as they're hidden but gave some soft lighting and then chipped it around to the other side and did exactly the same thing using acacia doors just to have a slight difference in colour and they look more like a, a patio-esque door than would something else because of their see-through nature. Continuing around with all of those slight edges just to break up that stripped oak. It's a little bit too much. I notice we've got the Grinch inside the house already. I then put some feet around the bottom of the house just to give it a little bit of extra depth and I textured up that chimney. It's very, very straight so it needs some texture otherwise it's just going to be far too flat. I then put some campfires inside and we got the smoke coming out the chimney at last, nice and cosy. So after just checking that I've got all of that dark wood detailing in the corners, I decided that I just wanted to put a little triangle in the middle of these wide sides because there's just too much, again, stripped oak. And then we put some garlands. This is oak leaves, believe it or not, although they do look a lot darker because of the biome. It makes for a nice little feature and we can make these really Christmassy in a moment. Then we put it across the front as well. Slightly different hanging because of the different sizes of those sections, but I think it came out rather well. So I just wanted to put just a little bit of extra small detail, so I'm putting some stone buttons two different levels on all of those struts. It just gives it a little bit more pop and a little bit more depth, and then it comes to the bushes. I'm not going to overbush this because I don't want the bushes to take away from the rest of the house, but bushes add a really nice amount of colour to all of that brown wood, and I think it makes a big, big difference.
So just add a little bit more light, Christmas's lights and things like that. So we've got more lanterns around the windows just to give it a little bit more glow. And then we put some buttons around the top as well to equal out the top and the bottom. What is Christmas without a Christmas tree? So I'm just making a little custom spruce Christmas tree here using spruce leaves rather than the oak leaves. Then we're gonna decorate it up with some colored wool for the baubles. And then we're gonna put some gifts underneath using some glazed terracotta. Just adding in a bit of a path now, coming in from the house and also the Christmas tree using path blocks, a little bit of gravel and some slabs, obviously fencing it off with a little bit of light. That's gonna melt some of the snow, but that's okay. We then put in some more red, green and white baubles across some of the garlands on the house. Again, some spot colors gonna make a big difference. And making a few little candy canes, just a couple, one on either side to give it a little bit more interest. extending up the bushes on that path and then putting some more custom layers of snow different levels to give it some more texture it just makes it more interesting and then we'll put some snow on top of the roof to look like it's been snowing as it was just a little bit earlier on and we are nearly there I've got to be honest, for a house that I built on the fly, I don't think that turned out too bad. We've got some really pretty decorations there with our candy canes and our Christmas tree on the side. But what's really quite nice is that after Christmas, you can take these decorations down and this house will still act as a perfect home for you in this tiger biome or any other biome for that matter. There is a world download in the description below that you can come and take a look at this house and lift it off and put it in your world or whatever it is you clever people can do with this type of thing. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed this video, please do remember to slap that like button. It'd be great to know you're enjoying it and I will keep on making it. Also, if you've not done it already, please do hit that subscribe button. It'd be great to see you in my sub club and I look forward to seeing you in another video. You take it easy now. Bye.